Hi. In this video, we're going to cover project tracking in Housatonic's Project Plan 365. To do this, we're going to explore task information and several items in the Gantt chart view. Once a schedule has been created, and before we start the execution of a project, we can review the task anytime and change the information associated with the task if required. I'll start by showing you two ways in which you can change information about a task. We're going to continue using the construction project from previous videos. First, uh, we can do this in the task information dialog. Task information dialog is located under the task menu. So here's an example. We'll update this task name to add a review, prepare a review, and submit the project schedule. We'll hit OK. You notice how that updates in the task name field. At the same time, we can also change duration for a task to represent uh, a little bit more accurately how long it will take. And we can adjust the duration by uh, using a direct numeric input or by also clicking on the up down arrows here to increment. For this task, let's change to three and a half days. Now if you look at the table on the left, You'll notice how this change updates uh, the schedule. More specifically, uh, the finish date changes and the work value for the task increases. Also, the duration and work for its summary task change and the number of hours of work needed in the whole project updates. On the right side of the Gantt chart, if we hover over this task, It shows the new duration and finish date and other associated information. In addition, you can change the information associated to a task by performing several actions in the right panel of the Gantt chart. For instance, we may also increase or decrease the duration of a task by resizing the bar in the Gantt chart. In this way, we can adjust in a visual manner. And suppose we want to increase uh, one task by a day, uh, and we'll use the strip wall forms uh, as an example. can simply click this bar and drag it out a day. Similarly, we can also move the taskbar to the left and shorten the duration. Now that the schedule is finished, at least in its planning stages, let's talk about baseline. The project baseline should always come in between the planning phase and the start of a project. The baseline is a static copy of planned data that's compared with actuals and current data. It refers to a set of data about a project that represents a state before the work actually began. The baseline helps you visualize and attain your project schedule, cost, and work objectives. When dealing with the baseline, it's recommended that you use the Tracking Gantt view. To switch to this view, click on Tracking Gantt on the left side. This view, called the Tracking Gantt, is a type of Gantt chart that is designed to compare baseline dates. On the right side, you can see next to each bar the percentage. These represent the complete value of each task. So far, we haven't entered any progress for our tasks in the project, but we'll talk more about that in another video. In the left side, I want to change the table that is currently applied. So from the project menu, we'll select table and we'll select variance. The variance table shows start and finish dates for both scheduled information and baseline information, making it possible to evaluate your prediction of how the project should progress baseline, and also by comparing that prediction with how the project in fact is progressing actual. You may need to resize some columns here to, to reveal some information. So as you may notice, since we haven't yet set a baseline for our schedule, the baseline start and finish columns have nothing filled and they display NA, meaning not applicable. Let's see what happens when we set a baseline. To set the baseline in your schedule, we'll head to the project menu. Click on set baseline and set baseline. 
Now once we've clicked this button, you'll notice here in the left side table, these two columns get populated with values. In fact, these represent duplicated values from the plan start and finish dates, and they're just copied over there. When you set a baseline, it's like taking a snapshot of your project schedule at a particular moment in time. Similar information will be displayed if we change the table on the left to baseline, which helps you view baseline data. A baseline is a copy of the start, finish, work, and cost for all the resources and assignments, plus duration for all the tasks in your project. So we're going to insert the duration column here by right-clicking the baseline start column and inserting a column called duration. We'll notice that currently the values in the baseline duration column are an exact copy of, the, copy of the values in the duration column. On the right side of the tracking Gantt, you'll notice some gray bars underneath. These are baseline bars. Now the tracking Gantt view displays two task bars, one on top of the other for each task. The lower bar shows the baseline start and finish dates, and the upper bar shows the scheduled start and finish dates. Once the baseline is set, any changes in the plan that are different from the baseline will become obvious helping you to perform an analysis of the schedule. Now, initially when nothing is updated, the bars are the same, and they match each other. But when you start updating your plan, you'll notice slippage if you come behind schedule. For instance, if we have a week delay for some of our tasks, we can visually see in the tracking Gantt the impact. For example, if a task starts later than it's planned, it is behind schedule. Let's assume that the rough-in electric and plumbing and elevator task starts later with one week than it was planned. For this, let's change the start date of this task by using the Gantt chart. We're going to drag the taskbar to the right until it reaches a new start date. During the dragging, you see a virtual taskbar will be shown, guiding you through the change step. Dragging the taskbar to the right will cause your task to start later. After this, notice in the right chart how the two bars look for each task. You can see some differences between the blue bars and the gray ones underneath. The gray ones did not move. If we change the table on the left entry table, which is the default in this view, notice that by changing the start date, a start no earlier than constraint is added to the rough-in column. Now let's come back to the baseline table on the left side. Here we're going to start by inserting the start and finish columns. We'll right click on baseline finish, hit insert column, and add the start field. And we'll also add the finish column next to the baseline finish column. For the rough-in electric and plumbing and elevator task, if we look closer at the baseline and start columns, we notice that their values do not match like they did before. Similarly, they do not finish at the same time. This fact is also confirmed if we hover over the tracking Gantt and take a look at the tooltip. You can also view the variance table to see that a value of three days is shown as our variance. Let's bounce back to the baseline table. Now let's suppose that the perform architects inspection task you know, was planned for five hours, but it took two days. So in the duration column here, we have two days. And since we've set a baseline, we can compare it with the scheduled and actual data. Notice what happens in the right chart. The red bar on top changes increases by a two-day duration, but the gray bar, bar, bar beneath is still consistent and remains an indicated duration of five hours. Also, due to the dependency between the two tasks, the differences in the dates are saved in the baseline. 
Let's see what happens with the dates on the left side of the table. We've inserted two columns, work and cost. Here you can see the differences between our baseline and our actual. Now that we've set the baseline, we can compare between the baseline and the actual. Notice that this also impacts our summary task. We can see that now, according to the recent adjustments that we've made, that our project finishes on the 24th of January, which is different than our original baseline of January 20th. So we have a delay. So now, we'll take a look at another place where we can see the impact of baseline. In the project menu, we can click on project information and the statistics button. From here, we can see the baseline entry for start, finish, duration, work, and cost. We also might notice in the finish column that we have a variance. We'll also notice that there are differences between the current work and baseline work values, as well as for the cost. If we want to remove the baseline set in the project, we can go to the project menu and clear the set baseline and clear the baseline. Once a project schedule has been defined, constraints and calendars have been set, and the dependencies between tasks are inserted, you can consult the finish date of your project and analyze if the project finish date fits the estimated deadline. If we go back into the project information dialog, we can see what the current project finish date is. After we've created a schedule by entering tasks, assigning resources, and entering cost information, we're ready to evaluate and adjust the project. One of the common problems that arise after the planning phase is that the finish date of the project doesn't meet a deadline, which is a mandatory requirement to be accomplished before starting the actual execution. So let's suppose that a deadline is imposed and the latest our project is allowed to finish is by the end of this year on December 21st, before the winter holiday. If we look in the first row corresponding to the project summary task, we can see that our project now ends on January 24th. To address this issue, we need to crash the project or shorten it to meet an end date. Therefore, the problem to be solved here requires you to bring the finish date earlier to fit a tight deadline and no delays are allowed after this date. So it's important that your project finishes on schedule so we're going to pay close attention to the tasks on the critical path, as well as the resources assigned to those tasks. These elements all affect whether the project will finish on time. So here in the tracking camp view, let's take a look at the right chart where the tasks are displayed in red bars. The first solution to alleviate the problem is to run several tasks in peril, parallel. This is also called fast tracking by eliminating unnecessary dependencies. So for this, let's change the table on the left for a task called install conduit and ceiling plenum space. So we realize that this task is not really dependent on painting walls which is indicated as its predecessor right now. Instead, let's change it to 14, as it is dependent on pouring the concrete elevator walls. As we do this, notice that our task now starts earlier. Also notice the new project finish date in the first row. Our project ends now on July 9th, which is closer to our deadline, but not enough. Another solution to bring the finish date closer is to allocate more resources to shorten their duration. So this also crashes the critical path. Let's say for uh, our task, install ceiling grid, we can deploy more resources. So under the resources tab, let's assign 300% of the units. Notice after this, rescheduling takes place and the duration of this task is now minimized. Also notice that 
the end date for our project has shortened. Next I want to show you how we can revise and change information about resources in the project. Let's suppose that after further analysis we entered a pay rate for a resource that is not realistic, so we have to adjust it. So let's switch to the resource sheet view where we're going to perform this change. Let's suppose our painting contractor is no longer $40 an hour, but $50 an hour is a bit more realistic. Let's see the impact of this change. To have more detailed information about the tasks and their assigned resources, we'll switch to the task usage view. Now from the table on the left, we're going to apply baseline table. Notice that we can now see baseline related columns such as baseline duration, baseline finish, baseline work, and baseline cost. So let's look at the task ID number 18 for painting walls and woodwork. As expected, the change in the resource standard rate has an impact on the cost of tasks. If we look at the baseline versus cost columns, we can see that the two values differ. Similarly, this can be observed if we go down a little and look at task number 23, or hanging wallpaper. Comparing costs, we can see the adjustment in the rate that we entered in our resource sheet. Also, if we go to the project menu and click on project information, click on statistics, we can see a new value for the total cost of the project, which is now around $44,000. This concludes our video on tracking Who's Atomics Project Plan 365. Thank you for watching.